Hi, welcome to this video day, 28th of October, it's Sunday. We're just going to be looking at a simple breakout trading strategy. Techniques, very simple uh, to learn, but it could be very effective, okay? Now, in terms of this breakout strategy, I just want to illustrate it with two pairs, the USD against the Czech Krona, USD against the Danish Krona. Now, in terms of those two pairs, or most uh, broker platforms, but most traders probably don't consider them. Um, they look great risk to reward trades. Very often in the minors, you get really great opportunities, better than in the majors. They can be very volatile, trend well, you get really good risk to reward. Now, in terms of these two pairs, um, normally what we want to do, anyone who's a regular viewer of our videos will know this, we like to know where the big speculative money is sitting behind the chart, okay? Now, for this, we would normally use the Commitment of Traders Report, COT. In these pairs, there is no COT, but we can basically um, assume that speculators are very short the USD, okay? Now, in terms of how we've done this, we've looked at bank and broker reports, but we've also measured their value against the currency that's got a heavy influence on them. They're both Euro proxies, okay? They're being dragged up by the Euro for the last year or so. The Euro's now starting to come down a bit and the proxies are going down. They're gonna go down a lot faster than the Euro. There's a reason for this. Um, and it comes to, uh, sorry, a summary I want to give, which is called frozen ice theory, okay? And I read this back in uh, about the late 90s in terms of in a book by uh, Stephen Dromby called The House of Money, which was interviews with a number of hedge fund managers and one in London. Yeah, coined this name, Frozen Ice Theory. And it's basically when proxy currencies overrun against the major that has dragged them up and they will fall harder. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick summary uh, from him. Now, he's talking about what happened with the Japanese yen in the 1990s and the, the Japanese yen proxies. Now, in terms of uh, what happened to them, is the same as what is going to happen, in my view, to the euro proxies. Now, what I just want to do is summarise it very quickly. Um, just to look at the summary. It's only about a minute 30 long. Then we'll come back and discuss in more detail and do the trade setups and draw our levels. If you know what frozen ice theory is already, just scroll forward a minute 30. Okay, be back in a moment. We'll come back up that uh, short summary there. Now, in terms of um, the proxies to the yen back in the 90s, it got absolutely hammered. The same is going to happen to the euro proxies in our view. And the USD has already made good headway, okay? So nice strength from the USD, more to come, okay? There are actually six in Europe to look at. 
um, USD against obviously Czech Krona, which we're going to look at. Polish Slotty and Hungarian Florent. I picked out the Czech Krona because I think it's got the most upside potential. Uh, in Scandinavia, it's Swedish Krona. Uh, Norwegian krona and Danish krona and uh, pick out Danish krona from here I think it's probably got the best potential and yeah it's got clear-cut breakout level okay now in terms of the charts we're going to go and look at them I'm going to start first of all with USD CZK and uh, just going to look at the weekly chart first the chart of USD CZK weekly just to see the big picture before we go and draw some levels on the daily chart now in terms of the weekly chart, we always like to look at it. It gives you um, the big picture, okay? Also, uh, weekly candles tend to filter out the noise that you can sometimes see on the daily chart. So if you get weekly levels that line up with daily levels, then those levels are more valid for us. So what have we got on this chart? Obviously, big fall down here in the USD, okay? Now, in terms of this, if you were to read the media at the time, it was all to do with the strength of the Czech economy. Nothing changed, really. It's just speculators pushing um, the USD down with a proxy to the euro. It's a spillover. Now, in terms of the media, they have to fit the story to the price. But yeah, if you look at the reality, the reality is... Just go and look at the other two Eastern European currencies, um, the uh, USD against the Polish Lotti and the Hungarian Florent. Put the three charts you know, side by side, this one with the other two. You'll hardly notice any difference in the chart formation. Yeah, the Hungarian economy, Polish economy and the Czech economy didn't all get strong at once. That is just media nonsense. OK, now in terms of. When we get down here, this final push down pushes her to oversold. She finds support. Okay. And then get a bit of sideways. And then she slices the 20 week moving average and goes up. And that's a bullish sign. Why? Because when you've got a strong trend, you expect the average to hold rallies. Holds the rally there. Holds the rally there. Can't hold the rally there. Okay. Now we do dip below the 20 week average here. This is where we got interested in going long because we come down to oversold. We're following this in the guest pair section so you can track us daily with what we're doing with this pair. So we just bought it, came through the 20 week again, and now we're going up. Now it's obviously sideways action and we expect that to break into another trend following phase. And we're obviously bullish. So where is the breakout point. It's here. So you've got basically the big red, blue tries to hold, red goes down, red rejection, blue coming up. Okay, that level is 22.85, but you want to just give it a little bit of room above the level. I'll come to that when I do the daily chart. Um, where is support? Well, you know, the 20 week moving average, if you're a bull now, should holder okay held it here uh, for the bears I think this is going to hold for the bulls so you've got some candles here so you've got red body blue body big blue another blue tail tail 20 week okay if I draw a quick trajectory line in you've got another level there which is going to be yeah really the 2250 level um Sorry, let me just draw it in. So there. Okay. So looking for a breakout and follow through. Uh, how far could we go? Uh, my own view is I'm optimistic. Here. Now, in terms of that being a long-term objective, I think that's on the cards. Why? Because when the USD got pushed down here, basically, um, the USD is in now far better shape um, and the euro is in far worse shape so that's easily on the cards for me um, so we're obviously going to see let's very quickly go to the daily chart and uh, just draw our levels of entry stop and target from the USD CZK daily chart now in terms of the chart um, obviously nice strong move up some sideways action 
coming back up to that high. Now you can follow this in our guest pair section in the website. Basically, that's the level we got really interested in the, the pair. She slices the 20, that's a good signal that she's going up if you're bullish. She hasn't touched the 20 day moving average. And now of course, we are coming in to the high, or the spike tail high. This one is 22.84.67, so just below the weekly level. So the round number is important, 22.85. Would I come in straight above that level? The answer is no. Um, I would give it a little bit of room. It's a key level, there's gonna be a battle. You also pay a little bit more on the spread in this one, so you have to look at your broker, but um, I would say 22.86.30. So just let it get past the battle. You know there's gonna be a lot of orders above that level. You want the battle to be resolved, and if it is resolved in the um, dollar's favor, she should continue to the upside. Um, if you miss it, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you want real good confirmation, if that makes sense. Now, in terms of if you're going for the breakout, where do you want to put your stop? Well, we saw on the weekly um, chart, there was quite a bit of, well, first level of support, 2250. There's, there's really good support on the daily, just below that level. So here, really, you've got a lot of, support okay quite a few bodies and obviously yeah tail does poke through but we get back up tail only pokes the 2240 level so my own view is um oh sorry i'm just draw a quick trajectory in as well so your trajectory there through uh two bodies two tails just above that level You've got obviously the 20 there, which you're looking to provide support with this uh, level and that level. You've got this tail poke here just through 2240. Uh, 2237.50 behind that tail, I think will do. Uh, if we break out to the upside, looking uh, for follow through and a dollar to move up to the weekly highs, which we looked at. So it's a pretty simple trade um, in terms of um, the risk reward, uh, really good. You've got about, uh, I think, a four or five to one on this one. Um, but it, it'll be, if it occurs, it'll be a high odds breakout. I'm just saying, um, yeah, just let it get clear of the number. Don't come in too close to the number. So, you know, if she breaks higher, I think the odds of continuation are high. If she comes back, um, I'm sure there'll be another opportunity to get into this pair. But uh, next week, I'm yeah, looking for the breakout, see if it happens. Right, let's have a look at the uh, USD DKK weekly chart first. Right, from USD DKK weekly, leak, very quickly, just see the big levels. And I did say earlier on that um, USD CZK looked like its Eastern European cousins. It also looks like... Um, it's Scandinavian cousins as well, doesn't it? It's almost an identical kind of chart formation. And that's where you know this spec money, um, you know, basically that drove the dollar down. Similar scenario, break up, briefed it below the 20 week moving average, bounce off it, and now we're sitting here. And this is a not a clear cut level for me. Six sixty, okay. And um, yeah, where have we got support? We've got three candle bodies there. Obviously, you've got the uh, twenty-week moving average behind, but I don't think on a breakout you're going to have to be behind that level. You've got trajectory. Sorry, I'll draw trajectory. There we go. So you've really got support at the. Uh, weekly lows. Why can't I get that straight? There we go. So you want it to punch out this level, okay? Um, we go to the exact level and don't where are we going? Um, I'm just going to be optimistic again. Right up to chart highs, okay? Now let's go and have a look at the uh, daily chart 
um, just look at the uh, entry stop and target. All right, run USD DKK daily, which looks a little bit like USD CZK daily. And a lot of people watching might be thinking, why don't you just do one? Why bother with both? I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, in terms of, it, it, it's kind of a similar chart. Well, it's very similar. So you get exactly the same as you got on the CZK. So push off that support level, come down, push off through the 20, just like uh, against the CZK. We do actually touch the 20 here before bouncing, okay, which we didn't in the other pair. And now we're hovering just below the breakout point, which is 660. You probably guessed uh, where I think uh, fresh entries could come in. Get rid of uh, turbulence around the round number when the orders collide. I would say 661.30. We can draw a trajectory in, which will go there. But that's, that's fairly minor. It's on two tails, effectively. you got a firmer level there. Okay, so when we break above these two bodies on the big blue, but it's this level really, I think, that's important. So I need to put it on the level 650. Got 20 there. I would say 647.50 would be good. You know, if it does break out, then you're looking really for a good follow through. Um, a couple of what I said the risk reward was on USD CZK. I think I said it's four to one. I think it's actually five to one on both. Okay. Obviously, if what we think occurs does occur, it might not, of course. Now, in terms of these trades, um, why the two? Um, they're all pretty similar. You know, in the member centre, obviously, in the guest pairs, we've got USD CZK. Uh, and I've said that's probably the one that's going to move the most. But I, I won't go into it here. But in terms of the, the fundamentals behind this one, I, th I think the USD DKK could actually uh, be hit the hardest. I'm, I'm not sure. So, you know, I can risk a certain amount on the proxies. Not, not a big amount, because these long-term trades, OK? Um, all I'll do is I'll just split my risk in two. So it's the same trade, um, rather than say risk 1% on one, risk half a percent on each. I won't get the best if it goes right. I won't get the worst. I'll get something in the middle, which will be okay if it does work out as planned. Um, so we shall see, but uh, I know it's very simple, but it's just really weekly levels, very important daily levels and we tried to work out where the specs are um, if we've got it right I hope we have um, plenty of stops behind the level of specs that could get run which will repel the dollar to the upside uh, and I do like um, that frozen ice theory ever since I first read it, it makes logical sense and you can actually see the spillover into these miners with them all looking roughly the same. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, the breakout might not occur. It probably won't now. I've done a video on it, but if it does, I think it. Look, I think these look really decent trades. Small positions. You got a lot of upside, and uh, they they suit people who yeah want a, a, a big trend, good risk to reward. You know, even you don't need a big trade in these at all. Uh, a small trade could make some nice profits right that is the video for today thank you very much for watching me as usual take care have a good day